In this module, we went over a number of important concepts with regards to machine learning, specifically around neural networks. Let's take a look back at what we covered. Alex gave us a great overview of neural networks, how they work, and what they can be used for. We saw how a three-layer deep neural network can be used to classify gestures captured from an accelerometer. The big takeaway is that this type of model will make a prediction and give a number of outputs equal to our classes. Each output corresponds to the probability that the model thinks the data belongs to that class. We also broadly covered how model training works with backpropagation. Training samples are sent to the model, and the model makes a prediction. We use a loss or cost function to figure out how far off the model was from the true label, and that loss or cost value gets fed back into the model during backpropagation. Over time, ideally, the model's parameters will begin to pick up on the trends in the data and hopefully make better and better predictions. As training continues, we should expect to see the loss value decrease and the accuracy of the model increase. We can use the validation set to check how well the model performs on unseen data. We applied this concept by using edge impulse to fit or train a model to our accelerometer data. After that, we examined how the confusion matrix can be used to evaluate a model's performance. We calculated several key performance metrics using the confusion matrix, including accuracy, specificity, precision, and recall. Those metrics allowed us to compute the F1 score, which is often a better way to evaluate a model over strict accuracy. I gave you an overview of underfitting versus overfitting, how they can hurt model performance, how to spot them, and how to prevent or reduce each of them. Once we had a fully trained model in Edge Impulse, we could then deploy it to our microcontroller. Luckily, Edge Impulse converts the model and wraps it in a library, which makes it easier to use in an embedded system. Once loaded on our phone or microcontroller, the system would read raw accelerometer data, extract the features that we specified, and then perform inference with our trained model, giving us probabilities for each label. We can use those probabilities to make decisions or execute other actions in our embedded system. I gave you a demonstration using a smartphone on how you can perform live inference in a browser. I then showed you how to deploy a model to an Arduino board and use it for live inference. Finally, we looked at anomaly detection, how it's accomplished in the context of machine learning, and how it can be used to solve problems, especially with embedded systems. My hope is that by this point, you've seen how an entire machine learning project is accomplished, including collecting data, extracting features, training a model, and deploying that model to a microcontroller. In the next module, we'll go through this process again using a slightly more advanced model to do keyword spotting of spoken words, similar to how an Amazon Echo works.